hellos and welcome with a big bro fist to you all friday has landed yet again and we sit here in the fine fine locale of the goldshire inn in all its hd glory and resolution and it is so good to see so many of you here this afternoon so many new faces i see you there lurking in my chat saying first live drama I salute you, my friends. I salute you and I hope you are doing wonderful. And if not, just smile because we're taking our joy. <sighs> Don't it feel better? Doesn't it feel better just to ignore the world? Oh, it feels good. It feels amazing. Just if you've got any problems, just take some drugs and make it all go away. <laughs> That's the plan. That's what we learned today. When I was... Officially benched for side and Atheris because they don't need another hunter. Ah, <laughs> uh, I just took my joy. I'm very happy. Very happy that the Stone Legion Generals were my last progress boss. I'm very happy, guys. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Although I did get some pulls on Mythic Side and Atheris last night. I got to step in for a bit. Not the best boss ever. <laughs> Not the best boss ever. But in all seriousness, if uh, you guys are looking for a game in this end of tier sort of warm down of the big opening of the Shadowlands, fully recommend We Happy Few. It's a great, great old experience. And I fully recommend you jump in for a good 45 hours of nothing but joy and happiness. I'm, jo I'm lying to you. It's so dark. It's so dark. It's grim. It makes Game of Thrones look so happy. So, so happy. It's very dark, but I fully recommend you to go and check it out anyway. I fully recommend it uh, as we do that. Yes, and in great and wonderful news, but ba -ba I'm just going to fly us over here. They have managed, or say Bex has, put all of season three all the way back into the library on preachgaming.com. So if you're looking for them, you can find them on Spotify and Apple and Google, but all of season three is up there. Now, the reason it's taken forever to do seasons one and two not only are there like a lot more stories like 156 as you can see here this is before we like titled them we had an overlay i just sat and read <laughs> i just sat and read stories back to back without writing anything down or time stamping them or anything so praise be to bex uh for sorting all these out we will have season one and two up there at some point but as you can see there's a lot for bex to go through uh and also you may have noticed we have added a submit story. You can still email them in, but if you're ever struggling, guys, to submit a story to us, you can either send it to drama at breachgaming.com or you can come here and click on submit story. And there you go. Easy as that. It's all been made for you to make it as easy as possible. Wonderbar! Wonderbar to the team, all doing that stuff in the background. Thank you very much, you wonderful people, and to Mr. Nups, who designs the website and makes all that stuff work. It's all there, so it's as easy as it can possibly be. Oh, yeah. Uh, but what has Bex prepared for us today? Because she does, of course, read through all of your stories and then sends me the ones that she thinks are going to be the best for us to have a good time on a Friday. So again, we salute you, Bex. And I am reading a story here, which I can't wait to find out what it's about. Let me just type this title in for you. I'm sure it's going to be fine. Destroyed by a child. As I get older, this seems more and more relevant. But at some point, I'm actually going to get destroyed by a child, and it's going to suck. Some 12-year-old is going to come and just absolutely wreck me and my logs. Jackass. Absolute jackass. Uh, <laughs> this will be from our hero, Advent Wolf. Our wonderful website supporters. Thank you, Mr. Advent Wolf and Mr. Boxwell. Mr. Boxwell will also be taking part. Okay. As always, going forward into 2021, I have no idea what is coming up in these stories. So for all you newcomers, get your guilty, guilty, guilty hammers ready. All right? That's how we roll on the live stream. If you're here for your first time at the live show, guilty hammers at the ready. To judge, lest ye be judged yourself. <clears throat> Lovely to see. <laughs> There it is. Lovely to see. All right, then. Let's have some fun. Let's see how we got destroyed by a child. Dear Preacher and the judges in chat. Well, there they are. <laughs> you can see they are primed and ready to go, those judges. Have you ever done... Okay, it's a question to me. And to you guys as well. Have you ever done a dungeon or a raid with a player who was so head-scratchingly terrible you wondered how it was possible? Yes. Well, I might just have your answer. Okay. Well, yes, I have done that. Yes, I have. Uh, yeah. 
<laughs> I have been playing World of Warcraft for so long, I still consider Moradon as that new dungeon. Wow. Okay, almost as old as me. I'm going to upset you all now. In vanilla, I played a holy paladin with a thunder fury. Brackets. It's a long, stupid story, but I got it early and we didn't know what it was. <laughs> I fucking hate you. Like, I hate you already. Guilty. <laughs> you are guilty. You are guilty. Dude, I, my guild gave the first Thunder Fury binding to a hunter. We didn't know what it was. <laughs> we didn't know what it was, man. Uh, <clears throat> and around the release of Naxxramas, I got myself a new girlfriend. She absolutely fucking hated World of Warcraft. But her brother Advent Wolf played a warlock in a raiding guild on the Horde side. Baller before it was baller. Like it. We were enemies immediately and remained bitter rivals throughout the Burning Crusade. Why were you enemies? Are you a lion? So of course you're a paladin, yeah. Advent Wolf's battle tag was something fairly similar to, <laughs> to two dicks. Owing to the fact that he was born with an additional penis. Dude, I've seen a picture of that. I don't like it. I don't like it. I've seen a picture of it. Yeah, it's like, it's a thing that happens. And apparently, he says here after this, this is apparently not that particularly uncommon in Asia. Yeah, two penis. I have seen, not that two penis guy, not the Reddit one, but I have seen this before. Very bizarre. Early in Wrath, Advent Wolf got married, got a career and stopped playing Warcraft. His wife is lovely, but would not tolerate raiding. Incidentally, I have never asked her about the two dick thing. The right moment has never arrived, but I, of course, have curious questions. My girlfriend and I eventually got married, making Advent Wolf my brother-in-law. And the rules are you can't unfriend family. It's not true. You absolutely can. So Advent Wolf and his two dicks stayed on my Battle.net friends list throughout Kata, Miss of Pandaria, Warlords of Draenor, Legion, and Battle for Azeroth. During that time, he evolved. From a raider, to a muscle-bound gym nut, to a workaholic, to a skater dude, and then finally came back to geekdom and became a Pokemon master. What a journey. What a ride. He lives one suburb away from me, and we see each other frequently at family events. Ah, this is Team USA. Suburb, I see. Fast forward, then, to the Shadowlands launch. Life has turned me into a weekend player. Don't hate me. I don't hate you. These guys hate you. I was busily gearing up my paladin. Yes, the same paladin that I played all the way back in vanilla. One Saturday morning when I got a light blue notification. Advent Wolf has come online. No way, I actually said out loud. I sent him one in the pink. Hey, dude. No response. I did a world quest or two. Are you back for Shadowlands? I whispered. Doing another world quest, no response. I could see he was online in Orgrimmar. You gonna play the Warlock? I asked. Still no response. Thinking hard, I reasoned he might have forgotten the chat commands. It's been a long time. You just press R to reply, you know! I whispered. LOL! I got back from two dicks. Feeling slightly confused, I decided to ignore Advent Wolf. I continue on with my day. Advent logged on and off frequently over the course of the weekend. On the Sunday night, I arrived with my wife at her parents' house for dinner. Advent Wolf was there in the lounge, catching pokies on his phone. I saw you playing WoW again! That's awesome, dude! I asked enthusiastically. He didn't even look up. Not me, it's Boxwell. She fucking sucks. He told me flatly, and uninterested. Oh. Boxwell is Advent Wolf's daughter. And it's not surprising she's shit. She's seven years old. My sister filled in the details. The Rona meant they'd had to let their nanny go and they were looking for something that could entertain Boxwell at home during the holidays while they worked. They decided World of Warcraft was the optimal choice. <sighs> That's a parenting fail right there. <laughs> That's a parenting fail. <laughs> That's a parenting fail right there. We've got no nanny. What are we going to do? World of Warcraft though. Right? World of Warcraft, I'll fix that right up. Take Nothing takes care of your kids better than World of Warcraft. 
They had reactivated his old account to give her a try, and she loved it. So they bought a sub, turned on the profanity filter, and left her to it. Nice. Okay. Now, issues of responsible, responsible parenting aside, this was amazing news for me. Foxwell's previous obsessions, Bluey, I don't know what that is, LOL Surprise Dolls. I'm Googling it. You're not getting away with that. What the fuck is LOL Surprise Dolls? LOL Surprise Dolls. Surprise Dolls. Googling it. I need to see it. LOL Surprise. The full range. Oh, these are like not game toys. Oh, okay. They're like actual like physical toys. Oh, they look sick, by the way. There's a car. Oh, man. You guys got to get a load of this. Look at this. Fucking awesome. The Oh My God Surprise Mix. A hundred quid? What? <laughs> what the fuck? A hundred seventy quid? Oh my god! Are you out of your mind? A hundred and sixty quid for a dollhouse made of plastic? Oh man, I'm so glad I didn't get a daughter. Ah, oh, fuck that. <sighs> uh, Bluey, LOL, surprise dolls, Among Us, of course, of course. My kids play Among Us, by the way. They do. <laughs> so if you're getting owned, it might be my five-year-old wrecking your shit. Yeah? Do you know what they do? They both join the same game, right? And then they go, are you the imposter? And if one of them says yes, they just vote them out before the other one can kill the other brother. And then one of them just sits there unable to play. That's what they do. Every game. It's infuriating. Like, I hate it so much. I'm like, why are you doing that? It's so fucking annoying. They're like, this is how we like to play. Well, fair enough. Uh, and she was into some band called Blackpink. Where and it was beyond my comprehension how anybody could like it. Here, finally, was an opportunity to bond with my niece over a common interest. Oh, my God. I searched the house immediately and found her in the library, gyrating to K-pop, blasting from an iPad speaker. Big place. Box well. I hear you're playing World of Warcraft, I said. Yep, she said. I play that too. Oh, really? What level are you? I'm level 14, she told me proudly. I'm level 60. That's the highest level, she said. Her little face filled with awe and excitement. I knew that in that moment, her boring old uncle had transformed into a motherfucking hero. I'll never forget the way it made me feel. Being level 60 in the eyes of a seven-year-old. God, I'm amazing. The iPad forgotten, we chatted about the game all through dinner and long until it was home time. She had a million questions and I had all the answers. How does one acquire a horse? Wait, how does one acquire a pink horse? Where are the baddies exactly? How do I let my character sleep? What if my man gets hungry? How exactly does one acquire a magic wand? How do I find the money? Where are the unicorns? And finally, the question that brought us together. Can we play together? The answer to this was tricky. I'm Alliance, Boxwell's Horde. I offered to help, but she had to re-roll. Her dad, Advent Wolf, said fuck no. He never played Alliance and only knows the Horde transport network. And he's too old to figure out something new. That's true. That's true. At a certain age, you're never going to find those Zeppelins. They could be anywhere. They literally could be anywhere. He figured, to be fair, he would be the one who would probably be helping her all the goddamn time. So she'd have to stay Horde. There's no way I was leaving my guild full of old friends to play Horde with a seven-year-old. So, you know, that's that's the end of the dream. It's dead, okay? There'll be no bonding this day. Two months between that night and last week, I saw that Boxwell was playing a lot. Advent would be online when I logged on and still be online when I logged out. I always greeted her with a whisper, but she never replied. Except for the occasional LOL, all caps. Apparently, the all caps is important. I wondered what she was up to and hoped she was enjoying the game. I imagined her wandering endlessly around Kalimdor, doing kiddie RP with zebras and deer. But I was wrong. Eventually, I visited Advent's house for his son's third birthday. birthday. Boxwell, up in her room, sitting on a booster seat in front of a surprisingly impressive gaming PC, 
which was a combination of quality RBG, uh, RBG <clears throat> and girly stickers all over it. My kids put a fucking sticker on their PC. They're out the door. I swear to God. <sighs> RGB. <laughs> I couldn't remember it. RGB. There you go. It's got lights and girly stickers. Hi, Boxwell, I said, expecting, of course, the typical golden god treatment that a level 60 deserves. Hey. She replied without even looking. You playing WoW? Can I watch? I need to be a teen girl for a moment. <clears throat> Whatever. She said. It's just like a dad, I thought. Finding a chair. As I did that, I heard another voice. There was an iPhone lying on the desk running some sort of kids chat app. Boxwell responded to the voice saying something like, It's my uncle in it. In Cantonese. The little girl on the other end of the line giggled. <laughs> and they resumed their conversation. I saw immediately that Boxwell was playing a blood elf mange named after one of her dolls. Which she drove with the keyboard. Her camera was locked behind her in a way I didn't know even existed. Her UI was default. And her bars contained a small and weird selection of spells to click. My first surprise was that she was level 60. My second surprise was she had somehow joined a guild. And had chosen a Kyrian covenant. Kyrian mage. Alright. <clears throat> Alright. My third surprise was that she was indeed still in a guild. But by my fourth surprise, nearly sent me screaming from the room. She opened her screen. Motherfucker was item level 204. My character was 202. <laughs> <laughs> fucking turbo wrecked. <laughs> you fucking loser. <laughs> what a fucking loser. Loser. <laughs> How? How is this possible? I pushed in and moused over her collection of high-key cloth. She wasn't even wearing a fucking legendary item. Where, where did she get it from? And I was about to find out. Over the next two hours, I watched in amazed horror as Boxwell chatted to her school friend and repeated the same gameplay loop over and over and over. She would stand in Ogrimmar, Open the dungeon finder. Sign up for every single run on the list. Didn't matter if it was plus zero, plus six, plus 15, plus everything. Pretty quickly at some point she would get an invite. Then she would wait until she got a summon. Find the portal and walk into the dungeon. She was aware of how to click a ready check. Then she would follow the group. Keyboard turning. Just spamming arcane explosion. She had no concept of being in combat or out of combat and absolutely no concept of her own mechanics, let alone what the hell was going on in the dungeon. All she knew, though, all she knew was to run out of anything on the ground, which was lucky because it was Sanguine Week. When she ran out of mana, she would click drink until her character drank, even if she was in combat. <laughs> when she died, she would click the chat window, type LOL, all caps, and that was the only thing she would say through the whole dungeon. Her entire communication was LOL, all caps. People would say things in chat, asking for water, asking her to lust, asking her what the fuck she was doing. She wouldn't even notice. <laughs> oh my god. When the group fell apart, she would just press her Ogrimmar teleport button, repair her gear using guild money, and do it all again. All the time, she's just talking on the phone with her friend in Cantonese. You know what? I bet she's having the best time. I mean, everybody around her is just actually gouging their eyeballs out, right? And smashing their face on the keyboard and making an MMO champion thread about pugs and all this kind of shit. But she's having the best time. The absolute best time. I watched her run a total of these dungeons. A plus zero miss. A plus eight halls of atonement. A plus five spires. And a plus two other side. None of them ever reached the first boss. But then she got an invite to a plus 10 plague fall and everything was different. After some initial complaints, the group decided that they really wanted to finish the key and just treated her like a new affix. She followed along, merrily exploding all the blobs and spiders that came along. 
The group gave her advice before the big slime boy, the professor and the spider boss. She never read any of it and died. But the group won the fights anyway. Then she'd res up and continue arcane explosioning her way through the dungeon. Many people just called her a bot and just got on with their day. By this point, not only did the group carry Boxwell willingly, they treated her like a kind of mascot. <laughs> when I say the memes developed, they truly developed. When she died and said LOL, they would also LOL right back in all caps. <laughs> <laughs> I felt a bit sick when they actually killed the last boss. For the record, I myself have never even finished a plus 10 in the Shadowlands. <laughs> I was actually feeling sick in my stomach. Boxwell had died to a slime crash very quickly, but it didn't matter. The timer was of course depleted, but nobody could care by this point. They were all laughing at having a bot in their dungeon. And Boxwell just pressed her teleport button. Loot the chest at least! I told her. She turned slightly to the side and gave me a look. And then she threw her arms up in the air, squealing with delight because the postman had sent her items for finishing the dungeon. She went to the mailbox and right in front of my goddamn eyes retrieved a pair of 207 gloves. And they were an upgrade. <clears throat> she equipped them and then made her character spin around so she could look. At this point, a thought occurred to me. Boxwell. What did you get from the vault this week? Fuck is a vault. I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you. We took the portal to Oribos. Sure enough, her vault was loaded with goodies. A 223 staff that nearly made me weep with envy. She equipped it, and I sat there as her item level was now up to 206. Then, because she didn't like how it looked, she put her old staff back on, and... Deleted the do one. She didn't vendor it. She deleted it. And you know, honestly, she kind of deleted me that day too. I just said goodbye to Boxwell and went out to sit in Advent's garden, overwhelmed. The realization that all my years of this game. The ludicrous body of knowledge I have built in my mind. The research, the videos, the decisions, the relationships. I can't compete with a fucking seven-year-old. Thank you for reading my story. Should I quit World of Warcraft? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> no. No, you shouldn't. But the thing is, do you know what makes me really sad about this? Like, genuinely... I would do the same as those guys who finished the plus 10. If there was somebody in there doing that, I would be having the best time. I would absolutely finish the dungeon. If it was possible, I absolutely would finish the fucking dungeon. <laughs> like, it just seems too funny not to. Just to watch this mage running around, arcade explosioning, typing lol all the time. Ah, fuck it, man. <laughs> fuck it. I'd absolutely do it. No worries. I know, I, you know, I know people will be like, no, you shouldn't do that, Mike. Like, you shouldn't encourage it. And I'm not encouraging it, but in the bizarre scenario that happened, I would totally do that. <laughs> it's content. Yeah, I would probably start the recording. Probably. I've, like, I've got to stream this right now. I have to stream this. All right. Oh, God, that was painful, though. Motherfucker. But not entirely, like, not even remotely unsurprising. All right. After all, how many of you idiots got the fucking backpack before I did, even though you didn't know it existed? Yeah, I remember. I remember. Joining my group, taking the backpack and linking it to me. Thanks, fuckers. And then you didn't even use it. Then you didn't even use it. Alright, uh, according to Wonderful Bex... I still don't have it. I have it now. <laughs> I even capped another character so I could get it. And I got it. All right. The cute little moron noob. Okay. Dear Mike. Oh, it's starting official. Interesting. Dear Mike. I'm writing this to you because I'm a new viewer. Hello. Who just finished binging almost every single drama time. That's like 600 stories. Jesus. 
And whenever there'd be a newbie story, my ears would perk up wondering if anyone else's beginner years in World of Warcraft were as cringe as mine. Yeah, probably, probably. However, I quickly came to realize that even the newbies you and chat found horrifyingly cringy were more ex respectable than me. Really? Because we've had some bad ones. Really? Okay. So I decided it was time to finally sit down and send this in to you and your audience. In case you find it somewhat interesting, because I can guarantee one thing. You guys have never heard something like this before. The bold statement. We've been down some ropey roads on this show before. I want to assuage some fears before I start. This is not a horror story. This is just a tale of what happens when you let the world's dumbest person play World of Warcraft. Is this the person? <laughs> the LOL person? Is this their story? It doesn't seem written by a seven-year-old, but maybe... I want to go back to the year 2008 or 2009, around that period, and I am the grand old age of eight. One day, I see my older brother playing a video game that I'd never seen him play before. I watched him run around in a massive open world, attack creatures with magic and ride pretty horses and cats. It looked so cool. And being the youngest who had to do everything my older brothers did, I pestered him. And eventually, it was my time. He showed me the World of Warcraft classic trailer. To say my little eight-year-old brain was mind-blown, some would be an understatement. It was the coolest fucking thing I'd ever seen. I was one of those fantasy-obsessed kids who read every single Potter book and had an overactive imagination. I would re-watch that cinematic over and over again. I specifically remember excitedly counting down the number of jumps the female night elf does before finally transforming into a cat and getting goosebumps every single time. Now, before I start retelling my experience playing World of Warcraft, I have to establish some context so you guys have a better understanding of what kind of child I was. This was my gaming history. Cleaning Ponies game. <laughs> I forget the name. The Sims 2. And the closest thing to an MMO that I played was Webkins. Alright, I'm googling it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Webkins? What is that? Is that, that sounds cat-based. Webkins, come in and play. Oh my fucking Jesus. Uh, stuffed animal MMO game. Choose a pet. Adopt, adopt an elephant game. I don't like it. <clears throat> it's no Nintendogs, I'll tell you that. It's no Nintendogs. <clears throat> You had to buy the physical stuffed animal? <laughs> Still better than BFA. I was also obsessed with animals, so no fucking points for guessing what race class combo I went with. This isn't exactly a linear story. I have hazy memories from way back then. I was fucking eight. That's for you guys. <clears throat> so I hope you guys enjoy this little series of short tales. Let us begin. Okay. When I say that other drama time newbies were miles ahead of me, I mean they at least knew that you're supposed to do in an MMO, or any video game for that matter. Even though they were shit, they knew what a dungeon was. They understood a raid. They knew that things needed to die. They knew that things needed to get gear, right? They knew that you needed to level up. I couldn't for the life of me grasp any of these concepts. In fact, for my little eight-year-old brain, WoW wasn't even an MMO. Like, you keep bringing up that you were eight, so therefore you're excused. Motherfucking seven-year-old outgears most of my chat right now. Yeah? Just saying, this eight-year-old shit ain't gonna wash. Not with this guy, not with this audience. Alright? You can blame the fact that you're eight all you want, but frankly, you should be at least 220 by now. Alright? WoW... <laughs> In my brain, in my understanding, WoW wasn't even an MMO. My style of gameplay, as it suits me, was just treating it as if it was my big dollhouse. 
I spent a lot of my time literally role-playing by myself, pretending to interact with the NPCs as if they were legit playing with my Barbies. I had entire storylines and relationships with random NPCs that I thought looked cool. I decided that a specific house in Darnassus was my house now, and the NPCs in there were my druid's family. And every time before I stopped playing, I'd make the entire way back to Darnassus and slash sleep on the bed and then log out of the game. Aww. <clears throat> oh, you haven't got a creepy uncle in there. I didn't know how to do quests. I just spend all my time exploring the world of Azeroth and Outland and looking at the scenery and finding new places to RP by myself. I kept and threw away items in my inventory based on how pretty the icons were, smart. So my bags were just filled with trash that looked cute. Bless my brother, he tried. He really did try to teach me how to properly play. But at the point that I called my bags a handbag, he stopped. I gave zero fucks and thought the way he told me the game is supposed to be played sounded really fucking boring. So I just continued on my own. Unique playstyle. And that's a good point to drop out, right? If you're trying to explain the game to someone and they just call it a handbag, I'm out. I'm fucking out. It's also important to mention that at the point I could read some English as I knew what each letter was supposed to sound like, but I didn't understand the language at all. To the point where I just called Alliance and Horde, Blue Team, Red Team. I didn't understand how to pronounce those words. I also had a serious fight with my brother because I insisted that Night Elf is pronounced Nigtalf. <laughs> because a G and an H don't work that way. Smart. And if you can't even hear the letter, then it's just dumb. I mean, you're, you're not wrong. <laughs> you're not wrong. Suffice to say, I don't know what's going on. I haven't got a fucking clue, or even if I tried. Every piece of lore I could gather came purely from visual storytelling. So I had a basic idea of what was going on, but I didn't fully understand the story. But despite all of that, I loved Azeroth. So gorgeous. I loved the characters. And whatever bits and pieces of story I could put together, amazing. I had put together that the blue team and red team were enemies. Halfway there. And my brother told me to be careful of the red team... Because they, we were playing what he called a PvP server. Other players can kill me. I was horrified. Why would anybody want to kill me? Whenever I spotted a red name tag, I instantly went into cat stealth and hid in the bushes for minutes until I couldn't see them anymore. Just to make sure the coast was clear. Thinking back on it, I'm pretty sure they could all just see me through my stealth, considering the fact that I was like level 20. But they probably figured out that I was a noob or just couldn't be bothered to kill me. One time though, a tauren got near me. And it was too late. I just panicked and switched into my cat form. The gears in my head slowly turning, trying to think of what to do while I imagined my little cat was hissing and growling. I remember growling at the screen at him. Oh dear. <laughs> I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him. <laughs> the Tauren, he must have realized I was a noob, slash waved at me. <laughs> Went on his merry way. Oh, Little pat on the head. <laughs> the one time I did try to have some social interaction with another player was when I came across a female Draenei who happened to be from the same country as me. It all went fine until I called the Draenei by female pronouns and he got pissed saying I'm not a girl IRL. Don't call me a girl. I was dumbfounded. It didn't even make sense to me. How was he allowed to play a girl in the game if he was a guy IRL? It shattered my innocence. I left that experience thinking, how many other of the girl characters I've seen are actually guys? I was disgusted. <laughs> I never bothered interacting with other players again and just went back to playing on my own RP shenanigans. <laughs> the rest of my... <laughs> this is just ruined the whole game. I thought there was loads of girls playing this game. God damn it. The rest of my newbie days were simply long solo RP sessions that I honestly can't remember what they even entailed. I remember making tea for lots of people and having little doll parties. But there isn't really much else that's interesting. I think the perfect way to end this little segment of how I started is to tell you guys how long it took me to get to max level. Would you like to guess? <clears throat> Feel free. Some of you in one of the stories thought a week to get from 1 to 10 was bad. Some of you thought a half a year to get to 70 was bad. You thought never even bothering to hit max level was bad. 
It took me almost two years to reach level 80. And I only even hit 80 because at some point my brother got so sick of my shit, he leveled it for me. Aww. <laughs> Pretty shortly after that, my brother quit the game. And since I had no idea how video games worked and needed my brother to turn on the computer and boot it up and launch WoW for me every single time, that meant I stopped playing as well. You were a really fucking dumb eight-year-old. My kids can use Netflix, like, so easily that Emma gets them to do it for her because she can't be bothered. Like, I'm not being mean to kids or anything, but you're a really fucking dumb eight-year-old if you can't boot up World of Warcraft, right? Unless it's buried in, like, C colon backslash documents, backslash private files, backslash homework, backslash hidden folder, backslash butt porn, backslash World of Warcraft.exe, right? Unless it's in there, which I can understand, you probably should be able to boot a World of Warcraft by the time you're eight year old. <laughs> I'm just going to put that up there. <laughs> Let's go forward then. 2018. I have grown up now and I'm playing Overwatch <laughs> with my friends. Ah, the sign of maturity in us all. Overwatch. <sighs> BFA is about to launch soon. For anyone who bought the bundle things, uh, bundle thing that gets you special mounts and stuff, they also got you WoW Tracer emotes and Torbjorn voice lines. I saw these in game and thought, you know, maybe I should go back to where it all began. Back to World of Warcraft. I had never stopped completely caring for the world of Azeroth. It always stayed in the back of my mind as a nice, faint childhood memory of silly things I did. I, at this point, had my own credit card and job. I no longer needed my parents to buy me a WoW sub. I made, of course, some Night Elf Druid, as is the rules. But I quickly realized that Druid DPS specs are fuck boring. Wow. Wow. Have you heard of Eclipse? It's really good. Goes left to right. Think about it. Starfall, though. Big hands. Yeah, big hands. Have you heard of Convoke the Spirits? Have you? Pretty good. <clears throat> Pretty good. I decided to re-roll to the superior hippie tree hugger class and main that shaman to this day. And now that I could actually understand the story, this game was way fucking better. <laughs> One day around a month into playing the game again, I suddenly remembered the existence of that snowy place me and my brother always played at. With the sea lion people and the big alliance castle. I looked up wow zones until I found it. The Borean Tundra. Jesus Christ, you have fond memories of the Borean Tundra? Really? I looked up how to get there and made my way to Stormwind Harbour and boarded that big old boat like I remembered me and my brother did all those years ago. And I won't lie, Mike. When the loading screen ended and I saw that lighthouse in the distance and the icebergs with the little penguins on them. The cute ones, you know who they are. I fucking don't. I'm not manlying you here, okay? I don't know which iceberg has the cute penguins on it. I don't. A single tear rolled down my eye, thinking about the days when I was just a little girl. Cheers to you, Blizzard. I don't. I genuinely don't know. I genuinely don't know. As a side note, I showed my older brother the Shadowlands cinematic to try and get him into it because the Lich King and all of that so he'd make an account and play with me again. All he said after that was, who the fuck is that and what is this shit? Oh... He, did, he didn't like Sylvanas. Oh, poor old Sylvanas. She's my queen. She's my queen, right? <clears throat> my queen? You don't remember my queen? That wasn't too bad. You were just really dumb for an eight-year-old. Like, for real. I can compare. I have two children. Can't boot up World of Warcraft yourself? <laughs> okay. According to the list here... Somebody requires our judgment. Somebody approaches the court. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, are you prepared to render verdict before we've even started? Are you ready? I look upon you with grace. <clears throat> there are no names required. Judge Preach and the jury of the chat. I require nay request to throw myself upon your judgment on these two crimes. I find myself questioning my motives, and I must ask the court the question, am I the dick? Mm. Let me say this before I begin. <laughs> Women are confusing, man. 
<laughs> I <laughs> not a good start. And you vetted this, Bex. I just want to check. This is give the, we have the the guarantee here, right? You're not getting me in trouble here, Bex. All right, just checking. Yeah, this has been okayed. <laughs> Before we go any further, <laughs> this isn't gonna bash. <laughs> It's it's safe. Okay, we have the all clear from Bex. She has she has audited the story. We're good. All right, women are confusing, man. I live in the USA, and I will never ever all caps understand the actions of women. It's really easy. Are they going to get more money out of it? I'm joking. Fucking don't at me. All right, fuck off, man. My first story then <clears throat> happened in the cataclysm. I had just race changed my Nell Elf, Night Elf DK to a Wargon just so I could have some mobility as a DK as well as some sweet, sweet crit rating. I didn't care about... Wargon DK is gross, dude. Really? Gross. I didn't care about the fact that I was now labeled a furry by everybody. <laughs> it was about the numbers, bro. About the numbers. I had just left my Wrath Guild and joined a pretty chill ahead of the curve that didn't exist back then, but still, Heroic Guild. Back when Heroic was the top shit. They had seen my achievements in the game. Heroic Lich King, 25 man. I had Shadow Morn when it was current and did not leave my guild. Big steps. As well as both versions of the Lawmaster. They knew I was a nerd. And my race change showed that I was willing to pump as hard as possible. Big pumper, big player. Now, before I am judged for playing Alliance with this mindset, that's true. What an utter waste of time. You're tryharding on the Alliance side? <laughs> you dumb bastard. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> I played Alliance for one good reason. I had joined World of Warcraft for a friend. And he was Alliance. So that made me alliance. Once I was accepted to the guild and I server transferred over to a different one, saying bye to a PvP realm, I was quickly able to get Realm First Nefarian 25, Al Akia 25, and Chogal 25. And what happened next occurred during Sinestra progression? What's the title of this story? You're guilty at Sinestra progression. I'm really intrigued. Sinestra's not that hard. Hmm. Okay. My damage was beef. Almost number one consistently on the meters. Unholy DK Unite. I was too. Wait, no. Weren't we playing Frost then? Can't remember. <laughs> I'd have to check the video. I think we were Frost during Sinestra. I think we were. Yeah, I was. We were Frost, right? Unholy. Boo! And I was approached by a Holy Paladin in our guild. Said Holy Paladin was in a relationship with our main tank. What happened next destroyed the entire guild. You see, said Holy Paladin... Let me give these some quick names. Because uh, I think this is a short one. But let me get... Let, let's use some names. Where are our new viewers for today? Let's throw them in. <clears throat> let's throw them in. Let's have our... Uh, we need a, a, a name that translates something ladylike, I think. Uh... Okay, let's have uh, Purple Haze. Perfect. Purple Haze. Alright, Purple Haze is in. You see, Purple Haze was anything but holy. <laughs> Alright. Her approach to me was because she needed arena rating. Because I could blast, she said if I get her high arena rating, she would reward me by coming to visit and, well, you know, lay on hands. Nice. <laughs> Now, I'm not going to lie, I'm a horny dude. And I haven't had that much experience with the opposite sex in my life. But above all, I'm a bro. A loyal bro. And I was friends. All right, who's getting cooked here? Uh, Enos is definitely getting cooked. Perfect. <clears throat> and I was friends with Enos because I was learning tanking tips from him to eventually round out my role as a tank. Which I do to this day. I'm still a tank. Now, what happens next is where I ask. Guys and girls, am I the dick? We got our Sinestra 25 man realm first and then Firelands released. I heard Purple Haze flirting with a few of our other members in Mumble when our tank wasn't around, and I chimed in. Oh, lads, 
Is she offering to come round to your place for Arena 2? The silence was deafening. I was immediately hit by, dude, that's not funny. The fuck are you talking about? That's Enos's girl. What are you being a dick for? I, I, <laughs> I should have let it go. Right? I should have let it go. But, you know, I care about my reputation. And in order to prepare myself for the eventual worst, I had logs and screenshots of her asking me to carry her in arena. And I was starting to get upset with Gildy stopped responding to me when I asked for dungeon runs. Because they thought I was being mean to girls. So. I decided to defend myself. And put my screenshots on the guild forums. I mean, yeah. I mean. <laughs> I'm leaving this one to the audience. What happened next was, well, a shit show. <laughs> Purple Haze accused me of faking logs and screenshots. And almost everyone immediately believed her. Well, it turned out, I'm next to the only guy who's been offered some lay on hands. As I was being blasted, six more members, some of which retired because of her, chimed in and said, yeah, this is what she's like. And uh, two of them even followed through, posting pics of them together at their houses. Oh, my God. Only one of them was, a, as you might imagine, explicit. <laughs> who's posting, like, the explicit pic? This is the only pic I took. It's the only one. There's literally no other evidence we were together other than this one pic of me buried inside her. That's the only one I took during the whole weekend. Just for confidence, you know? <clears throat> Shit hit the fan. Enos broke up with her and threw her out of his place, leaving her homeless for the most part. He then left the guild in embarrassment. More and more people left because our main tank was no longer tanking and we were forced to go from 25 to 10, which is a crime worse than anything. True, 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 true. That is the worst thing to come out of this. More people did not want to raid in a 10-man guild because the loot is wank. I was the only one logging in in our guild, and it was dead. What is the judge's decision on this moment? Was I the dick? I mean, yeah, but like a quiet word could have happened, you know? Maybe not go straight to the public forums, you know? Not guilty? Not guilty. Really? <laughs> You guys consider that not guilty? Interesting. Interesting. Huh. You don't think like even a quiet word? I mean, realistically, the fact that you're not saying anything earlier and just holding on to this like backlog of fuck you evidence is a little strange in my eyes. I'm just going to put that out there. You know, I'm just going to say, I'll say it. Let's say I'm one of Emma's friends propositions me. I am one calling Emma <laughs> immediately and then getting her to go and tell her guy because I don't want any deal with it, right? Like straight away. I'm not going to be like recording it and shit and saving it for a rainy day. What the fuck are you guys up to? Weird, man. In case you want to get some legendary at some point, is that what you're saving for? Psh. <clears throat> Bit of a dick in my opinion. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> let's move on. My other story involves BFA. So have we got a verdict on that one? Not guilty. Apparently, by the decree of the audience, you are not guilty for incident number one. Personally, I disagree, and I'm the fucking judge. Guilty, motherfucker. You are guilty. Guilty. Right? Don't matter what any of these guys say. You see all these people there? Don't fucking matter. Guilty. Don't impeach me. Don't impeach me. Impeach yourselves. Impeach yourselves, yeah? Impeach yourselves. I'm the judge. That's why I was put in charge. <clears throat> My other story involves BFA. Right, clear your minds, all right? Clear your minds. Objectivism here. Remember, you have to also forget the previous story. You can't take that into account in this story, all right? <clears throat> I was the off tank for my guild, a brewmaster. And I was part of a leveling group. The issue was our healer. All right, who's going to be our healer here? <clears throat> Svelagut. I hope I'm saying your, na your name correctly. Uh, oh, no. Svelagut. Gotcha. And that's right. Okay. <clears throat> the issue was our healer, Svelagut would often take 
hour to two hour long breaks and I was getting right on my fucking tits. My thought process was this. I am the tank. It is important for me to max level as soon as possible so I can start running guildies through heroic and mythic dungeons as soon as possible so we can be geared up by the time old deer comes around. Svelgat got upset when I removed her from the group at her third hour-long AFK. For clarity, this is the exchange that took place. I swear to the court, this is verbatim. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> girl voice, girl voice. Dude, what the fuck, man? You have AFK'd so much, we're now two levels behind everyone else. I am one of the guild's main tanks. I need to level as soon as possible to help span run dungeons of people. It's the start of the expansion. There's no rush. Now stop leveling because I need to go to bed. Is she fucking kidding me? Is she fucking kidding me? I had taken all the Red Bull. All of it. I had prepared for this launch by shopping before we started. I had made sandwiches before we started. And I had all the Red Bull I could handle. And more than that, my server was stable. I ain't logging off unless the building collapses. She logged off without letting me be able to rebuke her. And I said, fuck it. And carried on with my leveling. I hit level 120 in the AM and skipped doing normal. Gathered four max level bros. Into the heroics we go by going to the dungeon's physical locations. We got through them quickly. And then after a short nap for all of us, we got back on and spammed all the mythic dungeons. <laughs> Imagine not going straight to mythic. Nerds. When we've pulled the final boss for mythic underrot, the whisper came. The fuck are you doing? I said to wait for me. I'm your healer. Didn't even respond, did I? I carried on with our kill of the abomination. And when he died and our mythic achievement popped up, she was furious. You asshole! You're doing mythics! Now you're saved and I can't do them when I finish leveling! I was confused. Saved? Saved? Who saved? I knew there were lockouts, but only to loot. I can run this motherfucker all day. I just don't get any loot. I decided to go smug mode. Actually, <laughs> it's a loot lock. I can run them again for anyone, including you. Yes, but you get won't get loot that you can trade, you piece of shit. I lost my cool and responded. Yeah, all that leather loot for your paladin you deserve after you probably AFK after every single trash pack. You disconnected from WoW? Posted on Discord that the guild, and me specifically, had turned into elitist jerks. And had spoiled WoW. She G-quit right there and then. And I put it to the chat. Was I the dick? <laughs> you're trying to get back in our good books, aren't you? Because clearly you're not a dick there. You know you're not a dick, right? But that doesn't matter. Because it's the first story that really matters. Yeah, like, this, this is bullshit. This is bollocks. You're trying to play us at our own fucking game. I know what the fuck's going on. I'm not stupid. I am fully understanding of what's happening here. And you scammed the shit out of us. Not guilty twice. Guilty first story. Guilty. Absolutely guilty. <laughs> Alright, we've got time. There's nobody home yet, so... Let's go with some reassembly required. Yeah, I think you were guilty there. I do. Alright, this is a lot of names, Bex. Alright, these. let's do it. Lund, Andre, Spix, Swerdling, Madfish. Have I got room? I think so. Ryom. Thank you all for your support, my friends. All right. Some reassembly required. Uh, oh, you're not bothered by that Spix having the extra capital letter, right? You guys are fine with that. Sure. That's fine. That's totally fine. Close enough, right? <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> Reassemble it. Look, man. 
change it. <laughs> change it. Change it. Mm -mm. Okay. All right. Are you ready? <clears throat> this features a lot of people. I don't know what it's about. Ah! <clears throat> In breach. <laughs> what? What's the matter? What's the matter? What's up the matter? It's fix. It's fix. Chris is going in. All right. Hello, Preacher, and the team, and a bro fist to every single one of you. All right, you're getting buttered up. I am writing to you today about how I took back my guild as they were exploding in Nihilotha. Although the story starts all the way back in the Emerald Nightmare, when I joined a guild to help out, I was a no-life raider, and my friend's normal heroic team needed a healing officer. At the time, I was in a top 100 US World 900 raiding guild, and decided to come into the guild as the healing officer. Eventually, my main raiding team split up, and I decided not to look for another, but instead to put all my attention into my baby normal heroic team and become their raid leader. When I became the raid leader to this team, there was some disdain amongst the raiders, as this mythic raider came in, took over their casual guild where they wanted to just have fun. Eventually, people left, and we became a heroic farm guild for the entirety of Legion on a very dead server. It's crucial that I explain I was not in the guild in the summers as I worked with my dad at a summer job since I was a student, and Lound would take over the raid leading and everything while I was gone until I returned to the game in September. I have turned my heroic team into an entry level mythic team as i depart the team during the tail end of battle for dazzara law i unfortunately had to leave the guild two weeks early due to my mother passing away and we tried for the first time to let someone else be in charge of raid leading this person was sphix as i was taking an expanding break extended break to mourn while i'm gone my life is getting crazy around this time and so i decided to hardly do eternal palace but when i logged into my server and no one is online it turned out the entire guild had realm swapped from one of the most dead realms in the United States to one of the most populated. And Lound had decided that we are a team good enough to progress into late mythic and begin our move to cutting edge. I was taken back. But I thought, okay, cool. I noticed in Discord after I transferred that I had been demoted and given the role of retired raider. Lound had been telling people I had no intention to ever come back since I didn't come back in September, which I normally would do. I decided I'll talk to Lound. But he explains to me the new situation we all face. We are a cutting edge guild now. Your mythic services are no longer required. As a team, we have outgrown you. You are washed up. And you step on people with dated credentials that are no longer relevant. Lown then brings up that I came back late, so I had realistically abandoned the guild. And I would never be an officer again due to disregarding the guild for other priorities. I remind him that I left early and took a long break because my mother died and it was pretty hard to deal with. He responds with, it's not my fault. You can't make raid times. And you decided to leave early. Okay. I tell Andre about all of this. He is also an officer and become an officer by two years at this point. I thought Andre would be appalled by this as we had always been on good terms. But motherfucker agreed with Lound. Lound and Andre decided I was trying to leech gear. And then stepped on the hard work that they had put in to their tier and claim it was because of me. I had didn't know what the fuck they were talking about. Based on all these events over a 48 hour period, I decided I'll be carried to ahead of the curve by the guild and would come back on my own time as a member and show them all that their former raid leader was needed. I was ready to prove myself and take back these motherfuckers. Now any normal person would have just left the guild, wouldn't you? Okay, sure. Moved on. Says clearly the officer team had turned on me, but I heard from the Discord... Lound isn't even going to be raiding in Nihilotha, and Andre, Sphix, Swerdling, Madfish, and Ryan were going to be the officer team. 
All of which I believed I was friends with. So here's my chance. Nyalotha opens. Inside we step. I missed the launch by three weeks. I re return the week Mythic opens. Right as I'm starting to gear up, I correct one of our new Mythic raiders. On some very simple things. As I correct him, in guild chatty types, Who the fuck is this casual? Which was now my guild rank. Telling me what's up? Who even is he? Who's this? Since hardly anyone in the guild remembered me, I had to flex my credentials and multiple cutting edges. That's not going to win you any friends in my chat, I'm sorry to say. And I explained to him, in simple terms, that I go hard. <laughs> By the way, guys, I go hard. This raider tells me, we'll see whenever you make it into the raid group, I suppose. And to myself, I think, yes. Yes, you will. Now, I'm playing a warlock at this time, and I was grinding hard. By my second week back, I had grinded hundreds of islands. I had the second highest neck level in the guild. <laughs> Woo! What a dude! <clears throat> what an absolute dude, really! Awesome! <laughs> the second highest neck level. <sighs> Man! Round of a fucking applause. Round of applause. Oh, good God. <clears throat> Where are we? <laughs> and eventually, by the time they let me into Mythic, I had the highest item level neck in the guild. I was already fully geared in Heroic by my second week back and had a ball of neck. So I say to the Ray Leader Sphix, I've put in all this effort. Clearly, I should have a shot. At being in the raid group. Look at my neck. <laughs> Read it, motherfucker. He tells me to fuck off. Nice neck, he says, but I don't have rank 3 conflict and strife. <laughs> Strong neck. No essences. <laughs> To be fair, no one in the guild, I don't think, had rank 3 by this point. And that I wasn't high enough... I, I wasn't a high enough item levels, and my corruptions were scam AF. I was a warlock, with infinite stars. Before you could buy corruption. Eh, so you're pretty much a god. I'll take that. After this raid week, I explained to Sphix and Andre that if they don't bring me soon, they'll create a place where I can't compete, since everyone will have more gear than me. So they say, okay, the next week, I get my shot. Into the raid I go, friends. Food, flask, augment rune, like a chat, everything. I am prepared for my hardcore mythic guild that has been made for a great challenge coming back. The guild was 3 out of 12 mythic Nihilotha, four weeks into the tier. What's that? <clears throat> Rathion, so where are they stuck? <clears throat> Hive mind? That's pretty standard. <clears throat> Hive mind, yeah? Oh yeah, and they are now progressing hive mind over Shadar. Until I said, let's go kill Shadar instead. <laughs> Mythic Shadar was my opportunity as a warlock. I came in with my infinite stars blazing, bro. And bim bam bosh, by the end of the raid night, I am the third highest DPS in the raid. Living to the end of every wipe, 95 survivability gang. What? I'm beginning to catch on that nothing has changed except the roster and they are barely above where I had left them in the past. I started getting mythic gear and I'm consistently number one and number two on every single pull, no questions asked. I'm participating in the guild and doing everything I can to push my character and be the absolute baller and get that officer spot back. <laughs> I kind of hope this all falls down, to be honest. You're a bit full of yourself, mate, aren't you, mate? You know what I mean? No questions asked. I end up getting the highest Mythic Plus score in the guild on my alt, a Blood DK, which I had been enjoying, and that we used to tank, and that we used to tank the Mythic Hive Mind. And I'm using an M Plus, of course, since Warlock was rough to play in M Plus. The guild is going well. Bosses start to die until we get to six out of twelve Mythic, and head to Vexiona. Vexiona Mythic was so easy, though. What? So many guilds died at Vexiona. I don't get it. 
We are having trouble with the DPS check. As a hunter in the raid, who is an officer, Madfish has auto shot and her two pets attacks as their top damaging abilities to Vexiona herself. There are a few people at the bottom of the pack here who are consistently being out DPS'd by tanks. These players cite they've got bad corruptions, lol. And bad mythic plus RNG. That's true. That's true, actually. That's true. You can't compare if you've got bad corruption, mate. Can't compare. I can't out DPS a tank. What if that tank's got Twilight Dev, though? Do you remember Twilight Dev? Do you remember, though? Do you remember? I remember when our tank was, like, first on the DPS meter. On, like, fucking Fury of uh, Nazoth or whatever it was. <laughs> it was like... <laughs> Twilight Dev's no joke, mate. You know what I mean? You got a tank smacking up that Twilight Dev. You don't know. <clears throat> The players are citing bad corruptions and bad M plus RNG is the reason they're lacking DPS, even though they don't even do M plus <laughs> because the RNG is bad. It's a vicious circle. <laughs> and they don't play enough outside of raids to even see corruption, to be fair. Just buy it, lol. <laughs> I don't get it. How can you have bad corruption? It's on the auction house. You guys are dumb. What kind of game are you guys playing? You're fucking stupid. You can't have bad corruption, mate. It's on the auction house. So easy. So easy. Stupid, you lot. Once we're getting low pulls on Vexiona, there is a pull where I forget a single soul stone. Maybe I miss one or two a night, Max. And Sphix talks about how much time I waste for our guild, which only has six hours to raid a week. He berates me in front of the entire raid for forgetting something as simple as the soul stone. I take it. Sure. But I'm pissed. I'm fucking pissed. After the raid, I decide to... Have a talk with Andre and Spix about how unfair it is that multiple people can pull less damage than the tank every single pull, and yet me missing a soul stone on a healer for a pull is the thing that costs us raid time and that blessed, blessed, sweet Vexiona kill. I talk about how it's crazy double standard that they should uh, should never exist in a cutting edge guild where raiding is taken very, very seriously. Andre talks to Spix, and Spix tells me it's important. That you are held to a different standard. You are a former raid leader. And a former officer here. It is not becoming of an officer of this guild. Or potential raider to be making mistakes such as this. It's a bad double standard in his head. I'll try and address it. <clears throat> this is perfect for me. Because I want to address something as well. This isn't a cutting edge guild, motherfuckers. <laughs> and I'm fine with being held to the same standard of everybody else, if that's alright with you. He agrees and we work it out, or so I thought. Vexiona eventually dies. The whole guild can rejoice. Big boy Ra Den is up next, and we are primed, ready to get our Vitas and fist weapons, but before we can even step foot into Ra Den's room, Blizzard drops a bomb on us. That sweet, sweet patch many of you will remember targeted corruption immediately i see how to get this corruption praise the visions i think about how terrible it will be on my warlock i hate doing m plus on to grind out nine expedient three corruptions but i fully intend to grind it out in a week i come to the realization minutes later that i am doing in the range of 30 to 50 plus 15s or higher on my dk per week as opposed to one on my warlock I love my death knight. I've always loved my death knight. And I could play frost in the raid if the officer team would let me main swap. I put my plan into work. I talked to Andre Sfix Swirling Ryan about this plan. I have to gear up my DK and get all the best corruptions on my DK. Because I love DK. My DK, how much M plus I do on him. How I have done more M plus on my DK this week than most of the raid team had done combined. Please let me be a DK. The officer team decide Swerdling, the current guild leader, would then be able to move to his warlock so that we could have summon in the raid to summon and everything would then fall into place. The officers decide that I should play what I want. But Swerdling needs to come along for the ride to gear his warlock as well. And the Blood Frost DK dream is alive. The first week of the corruption vendor hits and I am completely destroying Mapla with my friends doing as many dungeons as possible. I realized after the first week that I could buy all of my corrupted gear the second it spawns into the vendor. Everything is great. 
After one corruption rotation, which was about four weeks, I had been playing my wallet this entire time and we re we kill Raden. I tell Andre, Spix, and Ryan that my DK was ready with full corruptions. All the corruptions. Max corruption resistance in my bag. Full bits, bitch. I'm informed by Andre and Ryan. That's great news. That's tremendous. And you have put in a ton of work on that DK. Okay, we can make the swap. I agree, and they decide to bring me to Mythic on my DK's DPS the next week. But Sphix never even replied to what I was saying. The Tuesday reset rolls around, and I'm on my Frost DK, outside the raid. I am ready to slap some ass. Five minutes before the raid, Andre messages me, uh, Loggy Warlock. We good? You fixed? Okay, good. Mini F. All right. Uh, Loggy Warlock? No. I, we're bringing my DK this week, right? Plans change. Uh, I'm told... I can't. And as I'm trying to get my officer spot back, I decide not to rage until after raid night. I relog and join in my warlock, and Swerdling is in the group on his warlock. He used to be the DK, and the agreement was that we were swapping around until I inspected him. Swerdling had zero mythic plus items, some shabby heroic gear, didn't have his essences, still had blue on his character, he had one or two expedient threes. I am told by people during the raid that the plan was to bring my warlock. So that I could gear Swerdlings. I am outraged. I've done all the work on my DK. I am ready for this fucking raid on that character. I put in so much time and effort. But he gets a free ticket. On a character who's full CBA'd. And I can't play the character I put all the effort into. To trade him. The guild have promised me that I'll be on my DK for the rest of the expansion after this week. Praise be. One week, dude. One week. You can't wait one week. One week. What's one reset? One reset. You're going to kick up a stink for one reset? We promise, mate. We promise. After this reset, it's all G's, man. It's all G's. <clears throat> Fine. As long as I don't play my Warlock anymore. He has fallen in DPS. He's now 4th to 5th DPS spot because I've been playing my DK and getting my Biss Corruptions over there. Drestagath dies during the week. We had Swirlings, Swirlings, Wall, Swirdlings Warlock in the group. The next week rolls around and right before raid again, I'm sat on my fucking death knight and even more ready. I have everything. Raid supplies brimming in the bags. My supplies and my Warlock practically empty at this point. Ryan messages me and says, what do you know about Ilganoth? What do you mean? Kind of need two Warlocks at Ilganoth. And we're doing Ilganoth. So... We don't even want melee at that fight, if I'm being honest with you. You're going to need to relog again. All right? My heart sinks. You should have seen this coming, by the way, noob. <laughs> He's taking <like> melee. <laughs> I'm so disappointed in everyone. I just want to play my DK. Everyone in the officer team is railing me and forcing me into a character I don't want to play after they approved this swap. I tell them I'll play my Warlock one last week, but if everyone even asks me next week to come and raid on my Warlock, I'm just leaving. And I planned with a friend to have at least eight other players leave with me if I have to play my Warlock. Since we all agreed, this is just fucking shit been too long next week i'm on my dk and ilganoth died the week after i got to come on my dk we are 10 out of 12 mythic we're on track we're gonna do it as a team cutting edge is within grasp and we're carrying at least half this guild my dk rips through the raid and in my second week on him i am top two on the dps behind fire mages duh and competing with him my lowest pass is an 18 mythic and I'm enjoying raiding and playing WoW again! Finally, I'm having fun. 
Unfortunately, this is when we got to Carapace. I got a 96 percentile pass on my only Ilganoth Mythic kill on my Death Knight, and I think they would never want me to play Warlock again after that performance. The weekend before the raid, the raid plan is being made for Carapace. And a message arrives in Discord. What do you know about Carapace of Nazoth? You have to do kind of a few gateway things there. Did you know that? Did you know Warlocks can like solo the entire back area on their own, which frees up the entire raid? Did you know that? Did you check that? DKs can't do that. Warlocks can do that. They can. They can do it really well. We're going to need you on your Warlock. There's no other option. We haven't even seen a single log with a carapace kill where there isn't two warlocks. You have a warlock. So you should play that. Now if that were true, I would grin and bear it and play my lock for the first few kills until we recruited a warlock. But as a former raid leader, I keep track of kills and strats. And I know our comp does not need two warlocks. I spent all of Sunday looking up logs from Carapace kills where they had one Warlock. On Tuesday, I asked the officers to meet with me so he can come to terms on what the fuck I'm supposed to be even playing. Oh no, we've got net issues down the ass. We've uh, still got ages to go. Is it dead? Yeah, it's totally dead. Uh, come back to me, baby. Give me five more minutes. Come on. It's not saved. It's dying. I can see it. We're good. <clears throat> On Tuesday, I asked the officers, meet with me. Let's sort this out. I could seal my proof. Over 30 guilds I had found that had one or less warlocks on Carapace. And they tell me. Yeah. But we're going to need you to play warlock. Because two warlocks are required. And we only have one. But all these guilds did it with one or none. But we need two. I think of my fully corrupted, fully socketed DK, the big pumper. I'm not standing for it. I present my proof to Lounge, Sphinx and Swerdling, the three horsemen of forcing me to play that warlock. Even with the overwhelming proof, I am told it is impossible to do Carapace of Nazoth without two warlocks. I tell them that it must be an absolute miracle that these kill guilds killed it with one. And that maybe they must be the best guilds in the entire game. They're better than Limit, Exorcist, combined. Since they did something that was to them mathematically impossible. I'll tell them this. I will play my Warlock for one week and then never again. This is the last possible straw I'm willing to sacrifice for the guild. And that if they don't recruit one more Warlock, then I'm leaving and I'm taking my friends with me. Andre diffuses the situation. They know by this point that they need me a lot more than I need them. I play Warlock for the raid and have an insanely fun time because I'm memeing the shit out of the guild the entire time, making memes about the fight being impossible without two Warlocks. And I'm making jokes about how we only have one Warlock since Swerdling's Warlock still couldn't touch my damage, so he might as well not even fucking be here. All the officers are pissed by this display in the middle of the raid and they message me. Specifically, Ryan tells me to pack that shit in. <laughs> At this point, they'd rather just fucking kick me from the guild than have to put up with this nonsense. This is my guild that I brought up, so I decided to chill a little bit on the memes and the raid weekends with some decent carapace pulls. The officer team frantically recruit a warlock during the week as I relax on my death night and finally have a moment's respite from the officers who had been my making my tear hell. We get a warlock and eventually kill Carapace. When Carapace dies, Sphix says he'll be stepping down as raid leader at 11 out of 12. He's exhausted, he's burnt out with the tear, and he needs a break. Swerdling and Madfish follow in the next week. The guild goes from its six officers to three in over seven days. No one lined up to replace when he finished his last raid that week. Eventually, Ryom and Andre convinced Lound, the guy who had ousted me from my own guild in Eternal Palace, that it'd probably be a good idea if I did it. <clears throat> After all that had happened in the tier, Andre and Ryan were some of, still some of my closest, longest personal friends on WoW. This guild was my guild, and I had come back, 
I climbed up, I persevered to get my spot back as raid leader. The week after I took my mantle, 11 people left the guild. <laughs> I am ready to lead you! I realized there was no break. There was no burnout for these three officers. They had gone to make their own guild. They were sick of the threats. I am promoted to officer and I decided to type my name in the officer chat channel on Discord, which wasn't cleared. Only to see my name mentioned over 200 times since the week I had returned for Eternal Palace. These messages that I read about myself, they range from, he's a fucking terrible player. He's so toxic. We can't have him be an officer again. To how much I was complaining during the tier. To how much I was playing my character and no life in the game while others didn't have time to do that. Then I see the mother load of a plot. After my meme night on Carapace, there are over 100 messages in this Discord in a single night about a plan where the second Mythic Nazoth dies, they would kick me from the guild and flame me on Discord. Andre and Ryan, my dear friends, agreed to this plan. Andre said he had had enough of my bullshit and he was ready for me to be done in the guild. I couldn't believe it. I'm honestly not surprised. <laughs> Genuinely. <laughs> Genuinely not surprised. <laughs> really. You do come across as having quite the ego. I'm just going to put it out there. All right. Flame me all you want. You do come across as having quite the ego. And I kind of think you probably toned it down a little bit here. Just putting it out there. I'm not that surprised. I was handed a broken raid team missing nine raiders. Granted, they were our first raid, our worst raiders. Leading with Lound, who wasn't playing, but giving his advice. Andre and Ryan being my two officers, who, with less than 30 days before it agreed to kick me, because they were done with my bullshit. I got my guild in line. I have an officer meeting with Andre and Ryan, addressing all the bullshit they said, and asking if they wanted to continue the guild and make it better than ever, with an actual cutting-edge atmosphere, and people who generally wanted to put in time into their characters. They agreed, and to my rejoice, I rebuilt my roster. The first few weeks of raid were rough, but we still had an Azoth lockout on my Warlock. I was raid leading on my Death Knight and keeping everyone afloat. My raid team cleared all the way up to Mythic Ilganoth and eventually killed him. We knew Shadowlands were on the horizon, and after I made all the information for Nazoth, we all decided to save it for another day and prepare for the Shadowlands instead. It was a mutual decision, and we all needed a break from this absolutely insane tier. In the meantime, Sphix, Swirdling, and Madfish had gone onto their own guild on the server, and while we were back at 11 out of 12 Mythic, they were advertising their guild on WoW Progress. They had labelled it as a cutting-edge guild, whose players were 11 out of 12 Mythic currently and going to re-clear. They ended that tier at a whopping 4 out of 12, and all also got ready for the Shadowlands. I really like the people in the guild, I just can't raid with them. Eventually, Ryom left my guild and went back went to the other guild. I write this today one week into the Shadowlands, with my guild asking how the guild imploded in Nyalotha, and I thought I would share the story. I have 28 amazing raiders, who are hungry to get their cutting edge side in Atreus, and I want to raid lead a cutting edge. I've persevered, and this is my time to show it. I want to be friends with the other guild, because at the end of the day, the stuff that happened occurred because half the guild were a heroic guild, forced into Mythic. Struggling with the whole time, just wanting to be more casual, and the people they recruited and me came in with the mindset that this would be a cutting edge guild with cutting edge players who are putting in mythic levels of effort i miss the guildies i lost along the way but i'll always appreciate them even if i think they screwed me in nyalotha me lound and andre are the officers of the new guild and that is how it rests today your thoughts uh, you can't make heroic players go mythic man you can't do it you can't He's not wrong. It was two guilds trying to work together. That's never going to work. If you're a mythic player... Alright, how can I put this? If someone in our raid team turned up and said, let's say Finn, right? Let's, let's pick Finn. <laughs> let's pick on Finn. If Finn turns up and he tells me something like, I haven't done any Mythic Plus for the last few weeks during progress. 
I kind of believe that like that just wouldn't work, <laughs> right? But Finn would never do that because he wouldn't. <laughs> he just wouldn't do that, right? <clears throat> Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying you can't go from heroic to mythic. Yeah, that was, if you heard me say that, that wasn't what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you can't take players who want to do like heroic level content where you can kind of be relaxed and casual and you can miss miss quite a lot of stuff and still be fine and put them into like a cutting edge guild. That's not going to work. That's not going to work. It's going to frustrate and anger a lot of people. I would also say you definitely have a chip on your shoulder though. I would definitely say that. I would definitely say that. It's a combination of those things. <clears throat> That's tough. Uh, I don't envy any of you in that scenario. Make friends, for Christ's sake. <laughs> Make friends. You're both probably fine. Make friends along the way. <laughs> That's okay. Make friends. Make friends. Just, just talk to them. They'll be fine. They'll be fine. Who gives a fuck? Most people are fine when you talk to them. Just make friends. You already know them. Just whisper them. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Too try hard? <laughs> It comes across as too try-hard in an environment where people aren't try-harding. Right? Does that make sense? It's not strange for me that everybody in my guild does the more and does like 10 Mythic Plus every week. 15s. Right? It's not strange to me. The opposite is strange. Someone not doing that? That would be a problem. Yeah, that would be a problem. It's just a normal thing. Nobody's requested that of us. There's nothing in, like, the guild Discord that tells you to do that. It's just a thing that you would do. Yeah, except unless you're Furbo, and then you're not fucking bothered. <laughs> unless you're Furbo, and then you're like, well, I'm a Dispriest. So I'm good. I'm Gucci. There's no manifesto. No, there's no manifesto telling us what we should do or anything like that. Um... Is one of those things. Anyway, on the note of not throwing Finn under the bus, let's throw a host his way, shall we? That is the end of drama for this week. Thank you for joining me for an hour and a half long drama. Sorry about the internet blip in the middle. Seems fine now, but whatever. I'm going to send you over to say hi to Mr. Finn. Make sure you call him an elitist. That would be awesome. Uh, give him that love. And for the rest of you, I will see you for RPG February, which starts on Monday. RPG February, a big month dedicated to the history of RPGs. We're going to be playing them on stream. It begins on Monday. It should be a ton of fun. Uh, look forward to seeing you there. If you want info, of course, you want to submit dramas or anything like that, I'll look at the old episodes. They're all up on preachgaming.com. Have fun with it. Other than that, give Finn the big elitism smile from you guys. Bye, everybody. Let's throw it over. Oh, is he there? Ooh, he said he was ready to host. I can't see him. It doesn't say he's hosting him. Oh.